Oh, we're going to talk about music on Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. We are unplugged and totally uncut with Melba Moore. Not as good as you. You sound great. Oh, you stop that. <laughs> I'll tell you what sounds great. Imagine. This is a right. true experience. Let, Let you talk. <laughs> oh, oh, it's it's an experience of music. You cover so many genres, R&B, jazz. There's even a touch of some disco in there. I mean, it, it, it was really an honest-to-God adventure. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? You want me to say something? <laughs> what was it? An idea to explore, or how? How is it that this all of these emotions came out? It, it was it was uh, my daughter's creation. She's the head of this project. Her name is Charlie Huggins, and this kind of launches her into that arena of business. It's going to be on her label, and. Um, <clears throat> Her her uncle, Bo Huggins, is the brother of my ex-husband, Charles Huggins, with whom we started Hush Productions and the whole, really the whole area of my recording career. So although I have not been associated with the Huggins family, of course, I'm associated with my daughter and she's still associated with, with them. So she brought this to me song by song and I considered them and went into the studio and recorded them just to see if they might work. And eventually we realized we had at least maybe 12 or more songs and we might consider doing an album so it's not it wasn't the normal way that you come up with a concept yeah so that, I think that's why it's so diverse and so inclusive so when you put a song together like so in love what what is moving through you because is that something that you piece piece it part it together or is it something where you go in there with a with a full band and you're looking at each other in the eyes and and you really you know kind of get yourself into that moment no, you're talking about a live situation. In, in records, you don't see nobody. <laughs> don't you miss those days, though? Come on now. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but um, she she played me a demo of So In Love. The first thing I heard was, when you hear it, l- listen to that the intro. And it's it's uh, it, it might be, I don't know if it's electric bass or synth bass, but it's bass driven. The mm-hmm. first thing you hear is the bass. And then you hear these beautiful chord changes. And I think it's guitar and some, something rhythmical, but it sets you up. I said, I don't care who's singing this. I love it already. And at the intro. And then I'm, I'm listening. I'm saying, there is 12 in love. I can sing that melody. Means every one to me or whatever it is. <clears throat> I said, "Oh, but, but can I whisper like that? Because I'm used to belting, you know." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the song, and the arrangement, and the concept. I said, "That's a hit for somebody. It might as well be for me." <laughs> <laughs> you know, when 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 the reason why I brought up the thing about being in the studio because I think that was one of the, the the last time I was in the studio. I I had to go get the guitarist, but I wasn't there for the guitarist. I had to go get the drummer. I wasn't there for the drummer. I missed that opportunity of having that relationship and so I always want to know if people go through the same thing um, I think in some cases they might the, the musicians might play together in the studio yeah and um, I think in most cases they don't have to be together and so very often they're not so I think like this age of zooming and everything wasn't a big deal for musicians because they already work in some ways electronically separately but to answer your question now that you mention it yeah, I, I, I remember having such a wonderful time and camaraderie with the musicians and the other backup. Well, I started out in the industry as the backup singer. Yeah. So I wasn't the lead singer. I was part of a group. So the camaraderie and the um, figuring out the parts and uh, creating things or reading the music or whatever, you know, enjoying who we were singing behind, all of that bonds you in different ways. Like music does that anyway. But when you actually uh, are not just listening to the music on the radio or as a fan and you're participating in it, I think it bonds you in another way. Yeah. So now th- there is a connection with the album Imagine, a connection in the way that while I'm driving down the road or while I'm sitting in the studio and it's played. And and I was talking to my wife. I said, I think it's because she came from a live stage. She knows that we've got over ima- uh, active imaginations and she knows how to reach that person up there on that top row. And that's what we're doing as listeners is as, as we try to get our way through life. You're connecting with us with Imagine because you know what we're doing out here. Right. And in the theater and the live performance, you actually physically have to do it. Yeah. But in the process of learning how to um, rework these body members to do that and accommodate you, especially if you're a small, weak person like I am, but you now I'm come to be knowing the little person with the big voice, I've gotten stronger. So I understand that spiritually, 
emotionally, the whole body has to connect. Mm -hmm. And there are many, many things that you have to do with the with your being to reach out and get that person from wherever they are and the other things that are talking at them. You're absolutely right. I wouldn't have been able to say it like you just said it unless you said it. And now I can just repeat what you said in another way. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it is, yeah, um, but you, you articulated how we learn to connect. Mm-hmm. The song Take Me Away. What what an adventure for a summer song. I, there, there are so many different deep cuts on here that we're going to call our own without radio having to play it over and over again. But Take Me Away is one of those songs. It is. You, you just uh, mentioned what's happening to the album. Uh, since most people are, are um, releasing singles, mm-hmm. The album is a unique unique thing in, in the market. So what's happening is there's a different system of projecting singles. Everybody's picking their own singles. <laughs> yep. That is, that is so I, true. I, have, I already have two number one singles from the album, um, um, So In Love and Take Her Picture Down, but the album is also number one, and it's just out. So it's a, it's a, when people pick it, it kind of, it takes a different order. Do you, do you think that, you know, I, I was just listening to Howard Stern the other day and they were talking about soul music, how it just seems like soul music has always been there, but it hasn't been as powerful as it's been. When you listen to Imagine, can, I mean, th- I think they need to be introduced to this album and say, no, no, it's it's not just laying there. It is it is really a movement again. It is. And I think <clears throat> um, R&B music, as um, channeled or constricted as it may have been, is an alive, moving, organic thing. So mm-hmm. it continues to move as life challenges us. Nothing moves when it's not challenged and you just laid it, it just kind of you know atrophies and it dies. But uh, R&B comes from people who came here as slaves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we're going to keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm in the South. Trust me. I understand that 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 movement of music, because, I mean, it's it's fun to sit down with with the local musicians and to hear their stories and to feel their yeah. emotion. And, it, and, and yeah. I mean, it's just unbelievable on how there's there's always a story behind the story. Absolutely. And so uh, I, I'm saying that my album is, is telling my story and um, the things that I've overcome and still have hope for this this is an this is an incredible zeal that gives you when you have strong hope i think that's what you have and mine has been diversified so it's expressed that way in this album so thank god for the life <laughs> of that so did, have you had one of those moments where i mean because you, I mean, we we all know your history we know there's been some challenges and stuff like that but the thing about it is though when you create an album such as imagine do you look at yourself in the mirror and say god are you sure this is what you want me to do lord you got to talk to my heart right now because i'll be there just give me the command no he gave me the command each record at the time each song at the time really but i didn't have a concept but i received the command to try it and then Afterwards, he put it together, and I said, "Oh, you put this together? I didn't." <laughs> oh my God, I understand that feeling so well. So I know well. you do. <laughs> <laughs> and see, and the, the, so, that... so, so you are you are accusing me of being relevant and ready for the next era. But what what I really did was I said, "Well, I don't know what this is, but I'll try it anyway." Right. Right. Because I, I'm a firm believer that creativity is an addiction and, and there's no way that we can throw it away because it's always going to be tapping on our heart. You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do this. And, and we become the judgers. How do you set aside the judger in you? <laughs> I don't set it aside. Uh, you have to judge. Yep. But um, you don't you don't judge it by yourself. Now, everybody else who came to you with these pieces had um, uh, a point of view. So now I'm asking you, well, what did you think? How, how, how do you see me? Mm-hmm. Uh, I said, yeah, but I always did. Well, it's not time to do that now. now you did that. So now what about this? And in, in, in um, union with each other, you judge. you got a panel of jurists now. You're not doing it by yourself. So, so it's an avenue of transparency then? Absolutely. Because when you, when, if, you, if we don't do the right thing, it's going to be transparent too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe in that. So discovering your voice. I, I read that your stepfather is the one that introduced you and your family to music. But I mean, you had to have had that voice when you were a child. Yeah, but I didn't have a family or right. a, a foundation. So I didn't, there was no music. So so I wasn't singing. I didn't start singing until I was nine or 10 years old. Mm-hmm. That's very, very late when you're the instrument. Mm-hmm. Did you? And I, 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 you know, I, I thank my stepfather 
well, I thank God for him being a musician and marrying my mother. She's a singer. And now I'm in a family where music is a centerpiece and he makes us all take piano lessons. Then I, I thought I was going to be a piano player. I was like, oh, wow, God, I love this music. Yeah. So, I mean, now music comes into my life. <laughs> Yeah, because when, when I was a kid, I, I didn't have the music background, but boy, I if I found a box and I found some sticks, you know, like from a tree and stuff like that, that became yeah. my music. And so, you know, I was I, always known as the box kid because he was always pounding on boxes. It's in you. So, and you know, I, I probably sang as a child, but there was, my grandmother was, uh, had uh, strokes and couldn't speak. So she, I don't know if she heard me singing or if I sang or not. The lady who raised me was uh, um, like a sharecropper. Or she she was a housekeeper. Mm -hmm. She wasn't had nothing to do with music. My mother was a singer, but she was gone all the time. So there was nobody to tell me if I had a good voice or not. Mm. I mean, so maybe I sang, but I don't I don't know. Was, I mean, adults are the ones who tell you who you are when you're a child. When did you start believing in that voice? Because I, I, I could just see you. If someone said that you had a voice, you kind of maybe, you know, shyfully look away. Well, yeah, but because my sister had a voice and my brother had a voice too, we all had voices. So it, it wasn't until it was time to go to high school, and I'd had some musical experiences in public school. Mm -hmm. um, they said, "Oh, yeah, she has a voice," you know. But other people have voices too. But I didn't know that I had a voice like that would stand out because there were other people around me who had beautiful voices too and other talents. But I knew that I wanted to be immersed in music because Daddy gave me piano lessons i knew i wanted to continue to study music so i decided i did not want to go to Southside high school or just a regular school i wanted to continue to major in music so i went to i chose and asked my dad and mom could i go to art and music high school so i could continue to study music i just knew i wanted to continue to be immersed in music but i didn't and then of course then people have these incredible classical voices i mean you're talking about talent yeah yeah it so but your question i didn't find that out until when did I find that? I probably when I around the time that I got into the Broadway musical Hair. Yes. So I'm, I'm really way later. Wow. So, but you've nurtured that seed the entire way. So many people walk away yeah. from that. They or or they, they you know it's like an apple tree. That yeah, because I've got I've got one in my front yard that's been there 25 years, and it's like yeah, I never walk away from that apple tree. That that tree is always speaking. Well, so is your voice. Well, also, you know, through all of that, I'm hearing all these great singers, and I'm saying, well, I can't sing like that. Mm -hmm. And so you might, be, you might be inclined to just stay in the background or not push harder. But I kept trying, I kept trying, I kept trying, and then I got an opportunity in Hair to uh, replace Diane Keaton and start singing in the lead. And of course, by that time, my voice was getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So even if I was singing harmony with somebody you could hear me stick it out or you could hear me in there with, with it had a piercing sound to it so something is developing and then by the time i got to pearly and i had one solo song the title song pearly and i they let me do what i wanted to do with it so i, I started hitting these notes and, and going as high as i could as long as i could and they kept stopping the show and they wrote another song for me then i began to say you know what there's something special about my voice so very late and, and, and yet it's so into today. That's the thing about it. You, you may have been late then, but you're on time now. That, that to me is the magic of, of creativity. I agree. I agree. Plus, I mean, I think starting in the uh, studio work where you see people's careers evolve and you're seeing behind them, but you can watch how it works. You keep growing, you keep growing and, you know, you keep working on it. So then um, you see music change. So you keep continuing to change with it. And I don't think it's something that you necessarily know, but you become like a chameleon. You keep changing. Yeah. Yeah. So as a musician with, with the digital age of streaming and stuff like that, where do you put your focus? Is it on Spotify? Is it on iHeart? Is it still trying to get onto the radio? I mean, because there are so many different outlets and it will exhaust the artist by, because they've got to be everywhere at the same time. Well, no, you get a team to help you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your daughter. <laughs> My daughter, and she has brought uh, uh, her radio promotion team, uh, also um, a PR team that focuses on other areas, and they kind of script what I, I have to do in terms of an itinerary, so I don't have to try to be everywhere. But I've, I've had to do that up until really now, because I've been doing it with me and my partner, Ron Richardson, 
and uh, we we just kind of like outsourced everything. And right now the project is so important. I need a team to just help me organize things so that I'm not all over the place trying to do things. Not going to get it done that way because it's, mm-hmm. it's scattered. It's it's not organized. So that's how I do it. I, I have a team that, that works my social media, and it t- they remind me to say download and stream the album. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, <laughs> Is is there a physical album? Because I I really have gotten back into uh, you know doing the inside sleeves and stuff like that. I I love holding an album in my hand, and I just can, that tells you how old I am. But I mean, I just love holding an album. Um, the the album the physical album is on its way. It's coming. Okay, okay. And it's just exciting to see this kind of stuff happen. And then when your when your vocals are coming through like that, it, it, it you you you're, you've got like you said there there had to be a story here in order for this whole entire collection of music to come together. Right, right. And, you know, how I feel is just, um, I don't know, um, gratified, uh, um, what, 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 what's, uh, vindicated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so on the song. Because you work on things and you hope for things when they actually happen. They are the proof that whatever it is you've been saying or trying to be or, or saying or doing, you know, showing two people or hoping for yourself, here it is so you can judge for yourself. So you're vindicated. Well, yeah, you took that hope and you created activation. Yes. The song "So in Love." Th- this one right here is 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 one of those where you can repeat it over and over again and still pick something up from it that you didn't hear the first time. Well, I think that's because it's not just a love song. It's literally a song to God. Oh. And so he shows me, yeah, well, I gave you romance. And I, and so you don't cut out romance. You don't go religious. You just go to the source of it. And I think when, when that happens, that's what you bring to people. So they see that in themselves. They, they're, maybe they're so busy, they don't go that high. Or maybe they're not religious. But it's there, so they can have it. That is so true because, you know, so many times people will, uh, you know, they, 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 right away they write you off as a religious person and you go, I, I'm not spelling that out at all. I, you just feel my energy because I do go to the source. So I totally understand what you're saying. And as you said, it's transparent. So you want what you think. I want what I think to be important to be there. I don't want to have to tell you. I want you to it's time for you to experience. <laughs> but also experience each other. Because if you experience me, you're going to come back and see, I'm going to get you to talk to so I can experience you. We're going to have this thing living with us. <laughs> Doesn't that start with the art of listening? Well, absolutely. But I mean, there's so many things in our, uh, our, our being in our lives that cut off certain areas of listening. We get to a certain point and then something interrupts. Or we get to a certain point and we don't know anything, so we don't go there. Yeah. Or we no, no one has ever taught us to, to keep searching. Many different things keep cutting us off. Yeah, it's called 2020. We, I mean, we have survived so much. You know what? And I, I have to yeah. tell you, maybe that's one yeah. of the reasons why I love Imagine is because it gives me that opportunity to escape, to go to a place where I don't have to think about anything but just listening to no. the lyrics. Just relax. Yep. Yep. Wow. You're not recording anything you said, download, baby. <laughs> oh, Miss Melba Moore, you've got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, you be brilliant, okay? <laughs> you too. <laughs> I need you. <laughs>